This episode of Someone Dies in This Elevator is rated PG-13. A warning to please take care of yourself. This episode contains violence and death in an elevator. Please read the show notes for more information. I wake up before him, on the ground of a giant glass box, and no idea how I got here. Before I even try to register my environment, I reach out to him. He's unconscious, in full hiking gear and boots stained with fresh mud, his hands still close on one of his throwing knives. James. My mind is in pieces, but my body knows. My arms remember his, my waist knows his hands, and my heart thumps in worry. But he's breathing. He's breathing. It's all right. I can finally exhale, look around, and take it all in. Outside the elevator, I find stars and nebulas, galaxies nested beyond shimmering clouds, space. We're in space, and I'm in awe. <sighs> James? Javi. Oh, oh, wow. Hey, no, okay. no, 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 okay. no, no. I'm here. I'm here. We're fine. What the, the walls? The walls, it's Javi, okay. where are the I got you. Walls? I got you, sweetie. Look at me. Look at me. What's your name? I see him try to quiet his breathing, frustrated by my insistence. James. My name is James. That's right. Now look at me. How are you feeling? I'm in a giant fucking glass box in the middle of space, and I'm wearing shorts, Hobby. If this thing breaks, what the fuck are we okay, gonna do? Okay, so you agree. It doesn't make sense, right? I see him blink as he leans away from me. It doesn't feel like an illusion. It would be a pretty bad one if it did, don't you think? We're moving, Javi. What do you mean? You see that lever? Wait, is this an elevator? And it's going up. It's not. We think we're moving. Magic is all about the brain. No tangible effects. I definitely saw a warlock set someone on fire when I was a kid. And you saw the flames? Yep, no match, no gasoline, nothing, just poof, fire. Still. Still? That's not tangible? If your mind is so convinced that you're burning, that your cells are collapsing and fires eating your skin, the shock will still kill you. But it's not real. Real is just perception. If someone can mess with your senses, then you can burn. Doesn't feel right. This is different. Hey, I don't dispute your expertise on the sciencey stuff. I'd appreciate if you left the mystical to me. Yeah, but I don't have the audacity to think that I know everything about my field. Well, of stuff. we are not the same. And the ice in my voice pierces through his panic. I see him make an effort, and then his shoulder relaxes. For a moment, he'll ignore his doubts. For me. What's the last thing you remember? I keep trying, but... We got into the temple. The temple? The temple! The map was right! Yeah, uh, electronics stopped working, our lights went out, and then... James locks eyes with me, so quickly, so desperately, that I freeze in place. He probes for an echo of his own memories in me, and he finds it. I see him tense and recoil, ever so subtly. His entire body rejects what his mind already knows. Pain, and a scream he had hoped to never hear. I think we died. I resist the impulse to lovingly call him a dumbass and frown instead. The idea is laughable, downright naive, and when you've dedicated your life to bounty hunting and curse breaking, it should really take more than a space elevator to give in to superstition. But I don't say any of that because nothing he told me ever rang so right. And as he looks up again, past me, I already know what I'll find when I turn around. Welcome back, children. We spend our entire lives in the dark, winging it as we go with only one guarantee, that one day we will die. And only after it's done do you realize it's not something we figured out. It's something that was passed on to us. This one truth, is a gift from our maker. And I immediately understand she is more than every song they wrote about her. 
She is the clear, obvious truth that we are loved, that someone made us with infinite care and watched excitedly as we roam the earth, that someone decided we should be able to laugh and weep and figure ourselves out. Mother Night is beautiful. Her skin darker than sleep and her hair laced with stars. And oh, how she longed to see us again, each and every one of us. How she hoped we would have a little more time, just for one more lesson, one more surprise along the way. Mother Night. Neither of us had heard her name before, but we were now in a realm of certainty. The truth didn't have to be found out, it just was. You were always so prepared, my love. I should have known you'd come bearing gifts. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't... Then what is that smile, if not for me? That gentle tremor as you said my name? A first tear rolls down James's face, and I feel a strange, almost alien feeling bubbling under the quiet, way below the peace that Mother Night brought to my thoughts. It's anger, and with it, a certainty. James shouldn't be crying. Every time one of you returns, I'm amazed at how little I know. I spend so much time on the details, on the arc of your lips or the canvas in your eyes, and I always think I'll know exactly the way you'll look at me when you come back. And yet, I can never predict the notes of your laugh, nor the weight of your tears. To this day, you never cease to amaze me. James tries to move a little closer, like a toddler drawn to open arms, but my hand grabs his arm and pull him close. Only then does he seem to remember my presence, as he looks at me and says, I am so sorry. What? You would have been extraordinary. What are you talking about? You were stubborn and proud and completely paradoxical and I could never figure you out, but when I stopped attempting to, I saw how hard you were trying. Every step of the way you strove to become you, completely and entirely you. You do the right thing, you're funny, you're kind, you're a fucking bingo card of qualities and... <sighs> You would have been so good to this world, and now look where I led you. Regrets are but lessons we've yet to understand. This is how you feel? About me? This is so little, Javi. I don't... I'm not good with words. I'm just so sorry. This gaze lowers, seeing him like this. His neck exposed like a lamb to the slaughter. The anger turns to rage. This is wrong. Wrong. Wrong! I'm ready, Mother Knight, for wherever you will take me. The dark silhouette gets up with the ease of the tides, and James closes his eyes, weeping quietly. And all I can say is, I'm sorry. James looks up and Mother Knight stops. What? I'm so fucking sorry because you were wrong. This is definitely an illusion. Ah. And that's not a god, that's a witch. So be it. The elevator is about two meters wide and four meters long. James is still incapacitated, I'm unarmed, and she's got a mean looking nine inch blade with teeth and tetanus in hand. But as she said, so be it. My leg swipes the floor and forces Mother Knight to step back. I have a split second to get up, a split second to... I stay low instead. I saw it in the twist of her ankle and the grip on her dagger. She would have struck me down immediately. Knees bent, I fake the move she awaits and duck down again. The dagger swipes the air an inch away from my scalp, and I take one step forward. I enter her guard and hit twice, stomach and liver before jumping away. You don't push your luck with a blade like that. Mother Knight takes the hit quite admirably, but her focus is shattered and the illusion quickly follows. Galaxies and nebulas vanish like a soaked painting, 
Even Mother Night loses her divine aura, as fade the stars in her hair. This is no place for the living. Whenever you want, James. It's all gone. Everything is gone. You were wrong to call it a temple, little man. This is a tomb. Then I'm afraid I won't go gently, Mother Night. The wolf howls. The moon doesn't care. Already she strikes. But this time she doesn't repeat her mistake. This time she truly sees me. Fists, elbows, and knees. My body is a weapon and she's too experienced to ignore the signs. I don't stand a chance. So I take a leap of faith. I strike an overextended left hook that has no chance to hit and leaves my guard wide open. And I brace myself for the iron teeth and the pain, but it never comes. James knife whistles through the air and finds the witch's heart. It wasn't so much a hook as a side step, an opening for him. An act of trust so stupid I can't help but let out a nervous laugh as Mother Night collapses. Close one. Thank God you were faking it. Oh my God. Yeah. You didn't know? I, I mean, there was a chance she had destroyed your mind, yeah. The whiplash from fantasy to reality can be- Are you kidding me? Did you see the fucking thing she was wielding? Why would you risk it? I saw it as a win-win. <sighs> Explain. Option one, you're not faking it. You're now a shell of a man, and frankly, I'd rather die than that. Option two, you are faking it, and here we are. How fucking dare you? Don't- Ever take a risk like that again, or I will end you! And I love you too. Are you hurt? Just a couple of bruises. Let me see your ribs. Hey, you can ask if you want me to take my shirt off. I don't mind. Hey, tough guy, let me care, okay? Okay. Uh, doesn't seem too bad. Uh, that one's gonna hurt tomorrow, but uh, I have a good bomb for it. Just remind me, okay? Okay. Javi? Hmm? Promise you won't do it again. I promise. Oh, fuck off. What? You're a better liar than that. You could at least try. Oh, so lies you can see through, but not illusions. Did you lie? No. Are you lying now? Yeah. Okay. I promise. Thank you. Oh, gross. Back off. I'm, I'm not kissing you when there's a dead witch on the floor here. How, how do we get out of here? Give me just a second. Also, uh, why go through all this trouble? Why didn't she just stab us? I mean, look at what happened when she tried. Fair. And also, we're probably the first visitors in decades. She probably wanted to show off a little. Magic is fun. Oh, yeah. Time of my life. Wait, the... This is an elevator. The lever is real. In an ancient, abandoned temple? They can't lead anywhere nice. You found your light? Yeah, lost my rifle though. Hey, how did you know? About what? The illusion. Because, uh, like, I get I'm not the most knowledgeable, but she was strong. Best I've seen, yeah. Then how? Because we die alone, James. If you were here, it meant there was still something to fight for. I don't have to say anything else. The rest he knows. The rest is too obvious for words. <sighs> Ready? Lead the way. I Won't Go Gently was written and directed by Sammy Suisi. Script editing by Jesse Shushu. Dialogue editing by Talon Stradley. Sound design and mastering by Tal Manier. Music by Trace Callahan. Executive produced by Colin J. Kelly and Tal Manier. Starring Jose Nateris as Zavi, Matt DeRozier as James, and Jordan Cobb as Mother Knight. Make a sound escape. Soundescape.production. Thank you for listening.